Hi, I'm Candace Rondeau. I'm director of the Future Frontlines Program at New America, a public intelligence service for next generation security and democratic resilience. Today, we're gonna to talk about artificial intelligence and the future of war. The way we've often talked about this is killer robots and swarms of drones, but we know that artificial intelligence is an evolving technology and, and that it has a, a long future ahead of it. And its impact on the way war is conducted is much more complicated than just robots out of control. So today we're gonna to talk with Jonathan Horowitz, a legal advisor at the International Committee of the Red Cross about how the law of war and the future of war intersects with all these evolutions and innovations in artificial intelligence. So Jonathan, um, what's a good metaphor for how to think about artificial intelligence in terms of where it fits with warfare and international law? How do we think about AI and war? Thanks so much for the invitation to the Future Security Forum. Um, Candace, great to be with you to have the opportunity to talk about this issue. To go directly to your question, I mean, it's, it's important to think about artificial intelligence as a revolutionary uh, general purpose technology, kind of akin to something like electricity, where we anticipate seeing it used in sort of every portion of our lives in the future. And that includes in the conduct of warfare, whether it's from things like procurement or human resource issues or patching up uh, uh, problems with uh, computer networks, all the way to things that involve conduct, uh, conduct of hostilities. And the, the, the one reason why I don't wanna make an analogy only to something like general purpose technology like electricity is because it's so much more than that, right? Artificial intelligence is gonna be highly coveted on the battlefield for the speed at which it can compute massive amounts of data to either uh, perform tasks without human involvement or to provide information for humans to make decisions on the battlefield. And with that comes um, considerable costs and questions and benefits. So two big questions, just to kick off the, the, the conversation, two big questions are things like, well, what does it mean when artificial intelligence performs tasks at a speed that exceed the ability for humans to intervene? And another really important question that we think about is, what does it mean when artificial intelligence provides information to a human, but that human doesn't know the reliability or doesn't know why that information has been produced and given uh, in the way that it has. So those are those are pretty transformative questions um, that that have the potential to change the nature of warfare in many respects. So uh, it's a it's a pretty big new technology being being put on the scene. So I mean, the way we've tended to talk about this and think about um, how AI would affect the way war is conducted is not the way you described it all. In fact, typically we've kind of tended to talk about it as killer robots, you know, um, run amok or swarms of drones out of control. Um, although, you know, some of the problems you're describing um, could lead to some of those outcomes, right? Uh, those, those are a little bit more extreme um, kind of ways to think about the, the challenges. It's actually, as you say, it's, it's extremely multifaceted. Um, and the ICRC, right, has this mandate that's really key, which is kind of guardian of um, the international principles of how war is conducted. The Geneva Conventions, of course, are extremely uh, well known. Um, they have been an important part of how wars both um, are conducted uh, in terms of being kind of like guide rails or sort of bumper books bumper posts, if you kind of think about it that way, but also for how um, you exit from war, right? They're really, it's a really key part of, um, you know, winding down um, and trying to find a path to peace, basically. So um, with that mandate, the ICRC clearly has, you know, weighed in on a lot of different things. Um, but this, what's new, I think, about the ICRC's position uh, and taking a public position is um, in the paper, 
there are sort of three sort of challenges that are outlined. Can you talk a little bit about those? It is important to, to think about the ICRC's reflection as not a black or white uh, uh, ban everything or allow everything to move forward. It's, it's a pretty nuanced um, position and consideration. And let me just explain how, how we sort of get there. And then I'll talk to those, to those three um, uh, trends or challenges that we're seeing. So the ICRC has been around since 1863. So we've seen a lot of new technologies uh, enter the battlefield. And when we do, we, we tend to take a look at um, how they're being designed and their intended military purpose. From there, we take a look at what their human uh, human or human uh, humanitarian implications are in terms of uh, what they can destroy or how they destroy it, what kind of kinetic or non-kinetic effects so on and so forth. And understanding those humanitarian costs or consequences, we then look at the relationship between the usage and what international humanitarian law, the laws of war, the Geneva Conventions say, because what those rules say fundamentally is that there are limits to weapons and means and methods of warfare. So once we, once we, we get in that frame of mind, what we've seen with artificial intelligence are, are three uh, uh, potential uh, uh, usages, right? One is, um, Increase, it increased autonomy in weapon systems, cyber capabilities um, uh, for, that, that are used in the conduct of hostility. So that's one, thinking about autonomy and what artificial intelligence does. Um, the second is around artificial intelligence and information operations, right? So propaganda is a age old uh, uh, part of conflict. What artificial intelligence brings to the dissemination of uh, information, propaganda, misinformation, disinformation is a speed and scale um, that is abnormal to what we've seen to date. And understanding what are the humanitarian implications um, of that. And then a third trend um, that we're seeing is the, the way that artificial intelligence can produce information that human decision makers use in their battlefield decisions, right? So this could be, you know, at the far end of the spectrum, things like who to target or who to detain. Um, so those are the three sort of bundled areas where we're observing different patterns and trends and understanding the humanitarian implications of the potential or real time uh, application of artificial intelligence. And we can talk about, and I'd be happy to talk about how the ICRC unpacks all three of those. But those are the those are the three main areas where we see AI having international humanitarian law implications in the way uh, militaries conduct themselves in warfare. What are the implications of the you know a competition uh, becoming sort of out of control as well, right? For the future of artificial intelligence in the context of, of warfare. I, I understand ICRC doesn't take positions on, you know, again, sort of national issues at all. Um, but what is what do you think that might mean for the future trajectory if you were to scan out five, 10 years from now? I think there's a real concern about whether artificial intelligence will give states, regardless of what state we're talking about, will give states an inclination or a capability or a um, motivation to do things that go beyond the limits of international humanitarian law, yeah? Um, and also to do things that maybe international humanitarian law didn't anticipate, but raise fundamental humanitarian and ethical issues, such as the removal of human agency from warfare. It's a pretty big issue to grapple with, whether you're looking at it from a legal perspective or a ethical perspective or from a humanitarian perspective or from all three. And, you know, for that reason, what the ICRC is trying to do, trying to work with all sorts of various states, but also technologists and, and legal experts, is to understand exactly this. What challenges does artificial intelligence pose to complying with the limits of warfare, international humanitarian law, um, whether or not 
elaborations in the law are needed so that we can all have a common uh, understanding of what it means to apply the principle of proportionality or the principle of distinction or the principle of precaution when using AI technologies. Um, and, and once we get to that point, trying to understand if there are any additional protection gaps, whether legal, humanitarian, ethical, and deciding whether or not there are um, just cause to think about having new rules, new regulations in place to make sure that AI doesn't push states into a space where they sort of, where AI is the tail that wags the dog of international humanitarian law. And so we just need to be really careful about those implications and try to understand them. Now, the ICRC, like many of us, are still struggling with the full implications of what artificial intelligence will bring. And I think it's um, it's not a closed chapter by any means. There's new technological developments happening at very fast speeds in research and development um, communities. So, so that's the type of thing that the ICRC is thinking about. Those are the types of considerations that are going into how we approach artificial intelligence. And it gives you a sense of where we see the trajectory of both AI, how it's used on the battlefield, and its relationship with international humanitarian law. You raise a good point that I hadn't really thought of, and I'm, I'm going to leave you with this last question. And, and um, you know, to what extent do you have a sense, uh, or does the ICRC have a sense of what the you know, technology companies, um, you know, and tech providers, what is their understanding of the challenge? Are, are you, are we in dialogue with them? Do they get it? Do they not get it? What, what is missing from their understanding of um, the challenge? Because I imagine you're kind of, you're talking, you're speaking different languages practically, right? Yeah, so I, I think this is an emerging dialogue. I mean, you go to uh, any conference on defense and technology, and there's a talk about academia, industry, and defense. Um, and so in these types of technologies, um, there's a lot of work, a lot of research, a lot of development, a lot of design happening in the private sector. And so it is really important for the private sector to be attentive to how their design, their applications, their use of AI will translate into a battlefield space um, and how it comports and relates to the, uh, the limits on means and methods of warfare, which is longhand for <laughs> international humanitarian law. That's a big challenge, I think. Um, well, listen, Jonathan, Thank you so much for joining us here at the Future Security Forum. It's been great to have you and I hope we get to talk again because there's lots to talk about on the future of AI and war. Thanks so much and enjoy the rest of the forum.